Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 figs, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner's circle. Remember, nobody does it better. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Pastor Wire TV. I am here with Luca Panici, uh, fresh off a grade two win on Mary Quite Contrary on the Pegasus World Cup card. Uh, ciao, Luca, tutta post. <laughs> ciao, John, tutta posto. Thank you for having me. No, um, th 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 thank you for coming on and, and con congratulations on a, on, a, on a beautiful ride, a beautiful trip. And a beautiful win on on what's turning out to be a really really nice filly in Mary Quite Contrary. Yeah, she's nice. Thank you. She's nice. She's a good filly, and uh, she always be good. But uh, race after race, uh, she's doing better and she's improving. Yeah, and you've never you've never lost on her. Um, every time you've ridden her, she's won. Um, let, let's start, get right into Saturday's race. Um, Pegasus World Cup card. Uh, you're competing against the best. Uh, all the eyes are on Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Uh, there was a heavy favorite in the race, Bill Mott's horse. Um, there were a couple of other very live-looking contenders. What were your thoughts going into the race about, about your Phillies' chances? Well, I was uh, pretty confident uh, because, uh, yeah, the race uh, was uh, tough, uh, but, um, you know, I know her. Uh, uh, she's a kind of uh, uh, good filly, and uh, like uh, when you ride the good horse, uh, your confidence uh, is more stronger. Uh, every time uh, you leg up you in the, in the paddock, you are on the horse, uh, and you build confidence uh, second after second because, uh, yeah, you look around, you look the field, you look uh, the trainer that uh, you see in the paddock, they are all the best. Uh, it's a big day, but you know what, uh, what you have uh, uh, under your hand. And uh, so I was uh, confident, uh, and uh, even uh, the, the start was not uh, one of the best uh, because I was squeezed. Uh, but um, after a couple of jump, uh, I I still uh, I never lose my confidence in her. When when you went into that race, um, did you in your mind think? And the reason I ask this is because your your filly looked like she would sit off the speed, and the favorite Bill Mott's horse looked like she would sit off the speed. So were you thinking that Bill Mott's horse was the horse you had to beat? And did you have anything in mind, like to get the jump on her, or were you watching her, aware of where, aware of where she was? How did that all play out? Yeah, of course. Uh, I watch uh, the replay of uh, uh, the Mott Philly, and um, you know, especially in the British Cup, the pace was uh, crazy, and she coming from uh, off the pace behind, uh, and she closed really good. And the plan was uh, uh, almost. Uh, uh, keep my feeling relaxing and follow the most favorites and uh, but by the way after a couple of four longer uh, he was uh, in trouble for the speed and uh, when i saw that uh, 
I think right away to jump on him in there. And, uh, you know, if I have a chance, I know that uh, my Felicia has a long progression. Uh, the pace was uh, crazy. And, uh, yeah, I don't look back uh, and waiting here. I just uh, ride my my race uh, and I ride my Philly. So you knew, you knew they were going really fast in front of you? Yeah, no, of course. Of course, yeah. after the first 16, uh, you figure out that the... Uh, the race was uh, with a with a with a big time, and the other day the the track was fast, but uh, was uh, pretty deep because I breathe horse in the morning uh, was very fast, but was uh, was pretty deep, and uh, so uh, that uh, that count uh, when you're coming from behind uh, that uh, count pretty good uh, if uh, if the pace was if you ride a good filly or good horse obviously, and right. uh, and at the end it helped because. Uh, you know, I figure out that the two in front, they went very, very fast. And I try to don't lose too much, but uh, it worked out good. When in your mind did you know, because uh, I, I was watching that race outside on the apron, okay, near the, near, near the stairway that leads up to 10 palms, which is not really the top of the stretch. It's more, more mid stretch. And as soon as I saw you coming on the outside, I, I, from from where I was watching, I knew I thought I knew I knew you were going to win. Um, when did you, when did you realize that you were going to win? Uh, by the quarter pool, by the quarter pool, when uh, my filly she was uh, rolling, exploding, uh, and uh, I saw that uh, there was the the romance uh, filly pretty good in front, uh, but uh, don't forget that. Uh, the the camera has a different perspective. When you are on the horse uh, and you watch in TV, you look like uh, you can be six or seven behind, but it's not really true. You are right. less than six or seven behind. And so at the end of the turn, uh, at the top of the stretch, uh, I was sure that uh, nobody coming fast like uh, like my my filly. And so I was pretty sure to catch uh, uh, Tyler and uh, and win the race. Yeah, no. So, so were you at, at any point worried about anybody behind you coming as well? Because you could see who's in front of you, who you've got to go get, but sometimes you can't tell if somebody's coming behind you. Yeah, but uh, I mean, my Philly was uh, close very, very fast. No, I was uh, no doubt that uh, nobody can pass me. Oh, good. Congratulations again. Thank uh, you again. And she's, she's, just getting better and better. I mean, uh, yeah. best is yet to come with her, I think, maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, the time before in the run part, uh, I think she ran, uh, she ran good too. She ran to me even better because it was a mile. And uh, a mile was uh, less pace uh, and she can uh, uh, grab the bit a uh, little bit before uh, than a sprint race. But, uh, you know, the good horse, uh, they came made... Uh, any kind of distance, any kind of pace. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you are good, uh, like her, uh, you run always, uh, always. Uh, she try, she's, uh, she's very, very smart. Uh, you know, she, she know how to win. Uh, she know how to fight. Uh, and uh, and uh, she's one, uh, one good thing of her. She's a really, really smart feeling. Do you think she can go, go two turns as well? Yes, I think so. I think so because uh, uh, she show she show a short uh, race, but she show even a mile, uh, and uh, I don't think the distance uh, can be a problem. Now, for for you, Luca, you ride Gulfstream Park year round, okay? Now, when the championship meet comes, and especially a day like you know Pegasus World Cup Day. All the eyes are on Gulfstream. You're a local guy with a local horse. You're competing against guys. Uh, Frankie DeTore rides all over the world, was there. You know, you got the Ortiz brothers. They, you, you, you know, are dominating a lot of the big races across the country. Uh, how special was that moment in your career to win that grade two inside information aboard a local horse that you ride for a local outfit at your home track on really the world stage, because that day Pegasus Gulfstream was the world stage and everybody gets to see it. So you get to showcase what, what you could do. So how special was that for you uh, 
personal. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was really special because, uh, like you say, is uh, my hometown uh, is a local uh, uh, earth, uh, and uh, you are against the best, and uh, you know. Uh, it's special when you come back uh, and uh, uh, you walk back to the jockey's room uh, and you see the big name trainer, they congrats uh, you, like a pleasure or not. I mean, uh, it's special, it's good. Uh, and uh, Frankie was more happy than me after the race. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a really, really good. Uh, and, uh, you know, she deserve uh, the trainer deserve it. Uh, you know, everybody that we work with uh, with uh, these horse, uh, we deserve it. And uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a plus, uh, you know, win uh, this kind of race uh, in this kind of day in uh, your uh, hometown. All right. Now, speak, speaking about your hometown, okay? This is not your original hometown. This is your adopted, yeah. adopted, adopted hometown. Yeah. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to that because I want to talk about that because that's, that's a fascinating story too. But... You ride, okay, in in primarily a a a, a Latin American, you know, Spanish colony and community year round. Um, is that tougher for you? Because it, I mean, it's not a secret that riders can be cliquish and uh, you know different groups are more friendly with other groups. How tough is it for you to really? be on your own at, 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 at that at that race track because you essentially are on your own I mean yeah no it's tough it's tough uh, from day one uh, when I arrive because yeah the Latinos community is the bigger here and uh, even a jockey a trainer and owner and uh, they have a different mentality different style uh of uh, riding because they're coming uh, from a fast 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 uh, racetrack and uh probably the race are uh, faster than uh, kentucky or new york and uh so it was tough uh, uh, they think that uh after uh 12 years now help me is that uh, you know is a 12 year uh, that uh, I'm uh, here uh, 11 years, uh, so I'm a veteran here, and uh, uh, I speak a really good Spanish, I think, uh, and uh, everybody knows me, and uh, so that helps. Obviously, uh, if you are in, you know, if you have the same country, uh, maybe it's a plus for other guys, but. Uh, you know, I'm always uh, the same mentality, working hard. And uh, when you work hard, uh, uh, you have the results. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You came from Italy to Calder originally, correct? Yes, yes. And yes. You, you did not speak Spanish at that time, correct? No, not at all. Not, right. not at all. I and learned, uh, I learned you didn't speak English. You didn't speak English either, correct? Well, uh, I study British English that is very different uh, about American. So right. uh, I have to learn uh, American too. So originally well, I, I, I study French. Uh, I, when I come here, I, the only language that I know good was French. And uh, so. So you come to Florida uh, from Italy. You don't really speak English well. Um, even back then, Calder had a very, very Spanish dominated, you know, colony and a lot of the trainers were Spanish. Um, so you come, you hit the backstretch, not really knowing anybody, not speaking the language. Uh, how, how, how did you handle that? How did you become a veteran and a mainstay on the circuit with all of that against you? Well, I think uh, in one word uh, is uh, perseverance, because uh, when I started in Calder, my target, uh, I, I didn't know too much about American racing, because I didn't know. I have just a friend that they work uh, as access a rider, and uh, I, I went uh, to, to see him. And uh, so I didn't know how 
was the community, how you have to work there. But right away, I started working hard and uh, I made myself working more harder than, than ever. And even uh, the first uh, uh, time uh, I could write only once uh, um, a day, I tried to do my best. Uh, it went once a day with uh, a 50 to one. And little by little, uh, building uh, confidence from the other people. And uh, I repeat, the only way that uh, I, I know was uh, the hard work. And uh, it was tough because uh, uh, it was a different world, absolutely different world. Not even uh, Calder, but the American race. Because, yeah, you can watch in TV from Europe. But when you come here every day, the the daily routine is totally different. Your body is totally different because when I come here, I was uh, 36. So I was not a young uh, young kid, and uh, so uh, little by little, uh, I like a sponge. I try to catch uh, uh, everything, uh, little from everybody, from uh, every rider, every trainer, every extra rider, and uh, so. I thought that uh, I, I, I do pretty good and, uh, you know, I, I can't complain. Yeah, no, and, and y y you know, you fast forward to uh, a couple of years ago and you went from, which I always thought was an, an, an amazing accomplishment and I would have loved to have seen that horse win. Um, you wound up riding in the race that everybody wants to ride in and win, uh, the Kentucky Derby. Um, you rode so yeah. you rode Sol Volante in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, after coming here and not speaking the language and not knowing anybody. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, like the, the Derby. I, I think uh, uh, if you ride, uh, you really understand what is, even if you ride once. Uh, even uh, I rode uh, during the COVID, uh, so there was no uh, big crowd there. But uh, the importance of uh, the week of the derby, I mean, uh, there is uh, something uh, unbelievable because it's uh, really something uh, unbelievable. Uh, and I think uh, you can compare uh, like a Super Bowl or World Cup final, uh, but uh, Outside watching or is one thing. Be there and ride is a totally different story. But it was nice. It was nice. I I just uh, thankful forever uh, the Mr. Reeves uh, that they give me uh, the shot. Uh, Andy uh, Biancona to give me a shot to ride uh, that kind of race because it was a very very uh, plus. Uh, in my career yeah um what 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 was that like knowing everything that you went through to get here and how tough it was when you got here before they sprung the gate you're sitting in the gate you're ready to come out obviously nobody knows what's going to happen when that gate's open what was that minute like a second for for Luca Panici, what, what what was that like? Did you have any thought? Were you just focused on the race? Did you realize what an accomplishment it was? Was it all adrenaline? What was that like for you at that second? Well, like I said before, when you ride a good horse uh, in a good uh, uh, race, uh, this kind of race uh, is a uh, is a uh, when uh, the trainer leg up you on the paddock uh, is an enjoy moment because. Uh, you feel that uh, you are uh, up to a good horse. Uh, and you know, the good horse are a push button horse. Uh, and uh, you enjoy all the moment. Uh, you, you just relax and you, you are happy to be there and to, to ride that kind of horse. Because believe me, when you ride uh, that kind of horse, uh, you are just happy. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a total different uh, feeling. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a happiness. Where we before you came to the United States, where in Europe did you ride? Well, uh, mostly I ride uh, in Italy. Right. I I have a chance to ride uh, 
uh, big race in Germany, in France, uh, and in Switzerland. Uh, I went uh, for the Derby in Denmark twice. Uh, uh, I have a good experience almost uh, around all Europe, uh, most in France because it's uh, close, especially in the winter time. Uh, a lot of uh, Italian trainers they they run there, and uh, so I was. Uh, but uh, basically, I was in Italy. Now, so you've ridden all over the world, but you 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 wound up coming to America, and you said that it's a different world and the racing is very different. What is probably the biggest difference in our racing than the racing in Europe and, 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 and other parts of the world? The bigger difference that uh, here is uh, more difficult right? because uh, you have to think uh, more quick uh, than Europe. Because uh, yes, in Europe, uh, you have a five four longer race like here, but the five four long race stretch uh, is very, very difficult by uh, the five four long like here with the turn. And uh, most of the race, uh, the big race uh, in Europe uh, are a distance, are with uh, six, uh, five or four four long stretch. So uh, the point is that uh, if you made a mistake, uh, maybe you can cover and you can uh, save the race uh, because you have more time uh, to have uh, uh, another shot. Here, uh, sometimes uh, you is too quick, uh, and you have to take the right decision. Is a less less time than uh, than Europe. This is the big difference uh, between the race here and there. So there's really no no margin for error. You can't if you make a yeah. mistake. That's it. You, you yeah, win. ninety per ninety percent. If you made a mistake here, you don't win the race. Uh, obviously, sometimes uh, sometimes uh, it can happen, and I. Uh, you you can come in again and win the race. In Europe, you have a more and more time. Uh, any 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 kind of race track uh, uh, almost have a long stretch, uh, and so uh, if you don't have a room uh, for a half mile, uh, maybe you can uh, even win the race. Here, uh, sometimes uh, you don't have a room uh, uh, until the end. Right. Uh, you know you. you probably have as much into in, insight into this next question or two as as, as anybody as a as a as, as a seasoned pro at at Gulfstream uh on the turf and on the dirt uh there's a big perception amongst amongst players and 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 fans alike and and and, and race watchers that Gulfstream Park is a speed favoring racetrack okay uh and on the dirt it's much better to be on the lead or near the lead to have your best chance of winning. From a rider's perspective, how true is that? And how should a, 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 a fan or a player approach that? Do, do, do horses that have natural speed have more of an edge at Gulfstream than at other racetracks? Or is that just really a, a, a farce, not really, not really true? Well, it is not false, uh, but I don't think it's uh, really true too. Because uh, yeah, the speed help uh, in Gulfstream, uh, but depend uh, how the track, uh, how the condition of the track is that day. And don't forget that in Florida, the condition of the track they can change from race one to race twelve. And uh, you know, if you are a, a good horse, uh, I think you can come in from behind. Uh, doesn't matter if they fly in front. Uh, of course, uh, the stretch uh, is no longer uh, as a Belmont uh, or some other racetrack. And uh, the speed always uh, has a favor uh, when the stretch are short, especially the, if it's the first wire too. Uh, but uh, I mean, I can say that uh, it's a rule uh, that uh, the speed uh, advantage uh, the horse on the dirt. On the grass, uh, yes, on the grass uh, is a very, very fast track. Uh, if you, you don't have a speed uh, and uh, horse uh, with a uh, big turn of foot, uh, it's pretty tough because uh, the grass, you know, is, uh, is always fast here. Really? Now, what, what, about, what about the wide posts? Another thing that people are very critical of 
um, especially in the two turn races, um, are the wide posts with the short run into that first turn. How much of a disadvantage is it when you're on a live horse or a good horse that has a chance, but you're drawn going a mile and an eighth or a mile and a sixteenth on the grass, and you're drawn in the ten, eleven, or or twelve hole outside? Well, I think I think uh, I think sometimes. Uh, more than sometimes, I think depend uh, the kind of horse that uh, you uh, you have. Because uh, if the horse is good, uh, to me it doesn't matter if you have a twelve post position, uh, number twelve uh, outside, and uh, you go in three wide in the first turn. Obviously, less the horse is good, uh, more ground you save uh, is much much better. But uh, I mean, if you are a good horse, the good horse uh, he can show that he can win uh, with a wide uh, trip too. Interesting, because um, a, a, a lot of people tend to back away or shy away from uh, the outside posts and the outside horses, uh, especially in the, in the two-turn races. And I tend to agree with you. I think if you've got the right horse and you can work out the right trip, you can really, really win from anywhere. Yeah, this is what I think. So, Luca, what are, what are your goals for the for, for the for the rest of your career i mean you're you're you're, you're an established gulfstream florida year-round rider um you've ridden in the kentucky derby you've ridden in some big races you've got a nice filly that you're riding this year um what what what, what are your goals i mean you, you've accomplished an, a, a, a lot and i don't think people realize how tough it is to go through and accomplish what you did coming from another country not really mastering the language not coming to uh an environment where there were a lot of people that were from italy of where you where, where you were from um that's an accomplishment to get established here but what what other goals what 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 what's out there for you next or what what are you hoping to do with your career well uh, goals uh to me in this uh, this kind of job uh, is very very uh, difficult to say okay this, this is my goal so i want to do this that, that i always prefer always in my career to live uh, day by day enjoy stay uh, healthy and obviously uh, the goals uh, are always to ride a good horse in a good race but uh, uh, sometimes it can happen sometimes it cannot happen so I'm not kind of guy that, uh, yeah, I'm a dreamer, but uh, no kind of guy that, okay, I want to win the Kentucky Derby and uh, I, uh, I, I, I live for that. Uh, no, it's, it, it, with this kind of uh, job, you, are, you have a up and down uh, uh, every day. And so I live every day. I try to, I, I try to stay healthy and uh, I enjoy when I ride a good horse. Uh, and uh, obviously when you have a, a uh, good horse, a good baby, you dream big, uh, and uh, uh, the target is always uh, to improve uh, uh, results after results. And uh, you win a great three, you hope to win a great two. You win a great two, you hope to win a great one. Uh, you hope to ride the greatest cup. You hope to find another Kentucky Derby horse. Mm. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, I think, uh, the... The, the the hope of everybody, every jockey, even if you are in the top ten of the nation, your target is always to be good, better, better, and better. This is my target. I I I, I try to enjoy, and I would like to you know ride more more good horse and more good race like everybody. Now, how is it that you? stay fit and in, in shape? Um, do you have a, a, a workout regimen, diet? What, what, what do you do? Because I mean, it's so tough to stay as fit as you have to, to ride every day, especially well, as we get older. Yeah, well, work out every day, work out every day, even in the morning when you work course or you go to the gym, I play tennis. I do always something to to be fit and the uh, more you do a workout uh, and better the diet is because uh, you can uh, uh, eat uh, maybe something uh, different uh, every day if you work out every day but uh, you know 
I always uh, do the same for uh, 30, more than 30 years, uh, eating one day, once a day with a breakfast and a dinner after the race. Uh, and uh, I do always uh, a lot of stuff between uh, workout, um, playing tennis and uh, play soccer, uh, everything, you know. And uh, it, it's a kind of, uh, but, you know, riding the race, the uh, more you ride, the more you're fitting, uh, your brain is fit because uh, it's a, a big part uh, is uh, coming from the brain. And, right. uh, and uh, is, you know, I try to, I try to stay uh, more uh, in action possible. Do you, um, do you, uh, when you, when you, when you ride, okay, how much preparation do you do before a race as far as reading the racing form, watching replays, studying the other horses and riders uh, on a daily basis for, for every, every, every race you ride? A lot, a lot. I like, uh, I like to do because uh... Right now, with the internet, uh, you can watch uh, every kind of replay in uh, all uh, all the world. So I watch uh, all the replay of the other the, the other horse. Uh, even my horse that I ride, uh, you know, you have to watch uh, the replay even if you ride the last time because maybe first time that you watch after the race, uh, you can find that uh, maybe after weeks. Uh, you watch the same race and uh, say, okay, maybe if I do in different way, it's better. And it uh, doesn't matter if it's a 60 to 50 or a great race, uh, you have to be prepared because, uh, yeah, it's true. When the gate open, uh, everything can change. The plan uh, uh, can change. But if you know the horses that uh, you, are, you have in front or inside or outside, uh, is a big, big help to me. Do you still get on horses every morning? You're out every morning working? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we work every morning. Wow. So your 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 day starts five, six o'clock in the morning and ends five, six o'clock at night. Yeah, it depends. Uh, some mornings are more quiet than, uh, than other mornings. Uh, some morning you work a uh, uh, bunch of horses. Uh, some morning you, you just uh, show up uh, and talk with the trainer. And uh, yeah, during the race, uh, it's the same, depending. You can ride one or you can ride a full car. Right. Do you get on the big filly in the morning or no? No, 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 no. Uh, I, I, uh, she has uh, her exercise ride and we don't change uh, the routine. She's doing no. good with exercise rider and uh, so nobody want to change the routine. Right. I Right. If it's not broke, don't fix it, I guess. Um, yep. any, any, any idea what the plans are for her going forward, where she might wind up? No, I hear that uh, she will have a few weeks uh, off uh, because uh, between uh, the rampart uh, and the insane information was, uh, if not make wrong, uh, one month uh, list because she ran the December 31st and uh, January 28th. Uh, I think next race, uh, it could be after uh, uh, even uh, seven or eight weeks. Okay. Um, how much does the Florida circuit change? Um, you know, Gulfstream now is year-round. There's no more Calder, so it's year-round essentially at Gulfstream. How much does it change? Um, and how, how does the race riding differ? Okay, if at all, maybe it doesn't at all. When the meet changes to the championship meet and the riders from Kentucky and New York and, and other places kind of kind of kind of come to town um, along with different barns. Uh, how does that dynamic change, you know, the day to day racing? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's nice when winter coming uh, because uh, uh, the big joke is uh, they coming here and uh, you you ride I think better because when you ride against uh, the best uh, you ride better and uh, uh, I like when uh, you ride against uh, Irad uh, that is the best uh, or even Jose or Luis Saez uh, and uh, uh, the race are different summertime uh, uh, we almost uh, we almost uh, in the last uh, years uh, 
uh, are the same guy because uh, there is uh, some uh, addiction, but uh, not really a lot. Uh, even uh, bug boy, we don't have a lot of bug boy in the last uh, couple of years, uh, and uh, so uh, we know each other uh, like uh, like we know. You know, we see uh, each other every day. How you ride and uh, how everybody ride. In the in the winter is a little bit more uh, uh, fun to me because I enjoy riding with uh, this kind of uh, guys. Let me ask you: when you wind up and you're head in head with a guy like Irad or a guy like Jose or a guy like Luis, and you're in the stretch and head in head with them, and you beat them, okay? Is it that competitive nature that all athletes have? or at least I think all athletes should have, um, do you get that satisfaction that, yeah, I just beat one of the top guys? Yeah, no, of course. When you beat a, a, a top jockey, it's, it's, it's always a, a plus. Even when you beat a, a top trainer, it's a plus because, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good for, for yourself, it's a good for your career. And uh, I repeat, when you Riding with the best uh, uh, look like your skill uh, was uh, improving too, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's nice. And uh, you know, these guys they are uh, exceptional jockey, exceptional athlete, uh, exceptional person because they are everybody nice person, uh, and uh, and it's good. It's good to to ride in this kind of meeting uh, with these kind of guys. You know, one of the interesting parts about horse racing, and people have spoken about this before, but it's a, it's it's an interesting dynamic, and I would like to hear your take on it. Okay, and it's it's I think it's exclusive to our sport because nothing comes to mind that 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 mirrors or parallels this. But you 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 know, riders, you go out there for the most part without contracts you know you have agents you have relationships with barns but you're out there competing for mounts and then you're out there riding competing to win okay and you compete in 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 what's a dangerous sport okay and out there it's all out no holds barred competition you get off the horse you go back into the jockey's room and for 20 minutes you're all in the same room same locker room together. Um, you would never see the Super Bowl is coming up as an example. Uh, the Eagles are playing the Chiefs. You'd never see halftime them going to the same locker room and be hanging out together. You know what I mean? Then coming out and play the second half. How does that work where you guys go from fierce competitors out on the racetrack to being friendly and cordial and, and, and almost like a brotherhood inside the jockey room? Well, you know, first of all, uh, I know a lot of uh, uh, top jockeys and uh, more than jockeys is a, a top jockey and uh, more is better in jockey's room too because they are class guy. And, uh, you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can have... Uh, uh, yeah, you can have an argument uh, during the race, uh, after the race for two minutes, uh, but uh, that's it. You're building experience, uh, you're building to know the other jockeys, uh, and uh, and believe, believe me, these, uh, these kind of guys uh, are uh, all class guys, because uh, I can name, uh, uh, you know, the Ortiz, uh, Johnny V, Javier, uh, Luis Saez, uh, Julian Leparou, I mean, all... Uh, uh, they, you, you, it's not difficult hang uh, hang out with uh, these guys because they are a class guy and uh, they run a thousand or thousand of race uh, every year and uh, yeah you can have a repeat you can have an argument for uh, three minutes uh, uh, watching that race uh, and that's it and uh, you know uh, I I grew up in jockey's room because uh, my father was a jockey so I grew up. Uh, uh, in jockey's room uh, and uh, I, it's my second home uh, and uh, from the day one uh, uh, yeah when you are young uh, maybe you can uh, be more upset than now 
but when you're building your experience uh, and uh, you understand that uh, you say that it's a, it's a very tough game, uh, dangerous, uh, dangerous sport. Uh, and uh, so if your behavior is good, uh, uh, it should be good for uh, everyone. When, you, you know, you mentioned something that, that, that brings back memories for me. When I was a kid growing up in New York, I used to watch a lot of races from the backstretch and from a little, a little hole in the fence on the far turn at, at Aqueduct. And one of the things I noticed that you never know if you watch from the stands or you watch on TV, and I don't know if it's the same today, but back then when they would pass that area on the far turn, turn it for home, a lot of times I would hear a lot of yelling um, amongst the riders. Uh, I couldn't always make out what they were saying, but sometimes they were yelling, cursing, give me some room, get out of the way, blah, 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 whatever. whatever. There was a lot of, a lot of yelling and, 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 and chatter and a lot of um, urging of their horses. Yeah, 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 a lot of stuff like that. Does that still go on and do riders yell at each other, curse at each other, get out of my way, give me some room? What is that like on the racetrack for people who watch TV and have no idea how competitive it is? No, uh, it still has. I mean, it still happens, uh, of course. Uh, obviously, if you go fast, uh, if the race is fast, maybe sometimes if you, they cut, uh, cut down your, uh, you and your horse, you don't have time to yell. You know, sometimes it's so right. quick. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it keep going. Uh, it keep uh, going, uh, doing this stuff, you know, talking uh, or screaming each other. Uh, but uh, it's a part of the race everywhere. So that happens all, all over, still happens today. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, what about fights? Fights ever happen in a jockey room? Well, yeah, the fights happen, but uh, we can't say too much. Is, uh, what, right. What's happening? What's what, happening? What happens in, in the room stays Vegas. in the room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Well, that that that's fair enough. That's how it how 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 it should be. Um, I, you, you know, I, I, I still think that it's, it, it, it's, it's really quite the story how, you, you know, you were able to come um, from Italy and establish yourself here and, and, and you, you know, get to the Kentucky Derby, win a grade two, win a grade three. Um, hopefully there's a grade one or a couple of grade ones with your name on it. Um, what was it that made you, when you decided to leave, Italy, pick Florida, pick the United States, and come here. Well, I, I picked Florida because uh, in the late nineteen, uh, I have a two stage with my brother here, and uh, it was the only race track that I know <laughs> because uh, really? you know at the time, at the time, uh, uh, yeah, you watch the Kentucky Derby uh, in TV, but it, there was no internet, and uh, so. Uh, when I come here, I have a friend that he work in Calder. I start uh, from here, and uh, you know, I uh, the weather was uh, was perfect because I coming from a uh, uh, north of Italy that it was very very cold in the winter time and during the racing meeting and in, in the winter was cold. And so when I come in Florida, I say no, okay, I I try to make here because uh, the quality of the life uh, is uh, is no bad. Uh, and uh, but everything, the main thing that it was. That when when I come here because uh, I know the place I know Goodstream uh, and uh, it was uh, the only race track that uh, that I know from uh, from uh, the beginner. Now, are you from where in Italy are you from? Are you from nor Northern Italy? Yeah, I'm from Milano. Okay. Um, you ever hear of a town called Castle Nuovo? Cas yeah, Castle. I never been there, but uh, I know uh, the place. Is it far from where 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 you were? Because I know it's a northern. I have relatives there. That's why I asked. No, it should be like a couple hours okay. driving. Okay, I think it was a lot of farmland. I don't know. I'm. I don't. I don't communicate with them much. But uh, I have. I have relative rel, 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 relatives there. I, I, I actually, and I know it's in the very northern part of Italy. Yeah, it's 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 freezing. The winter time is freezing. That's probably, better, probably why I, that's probably why I never visit. <laughs> yeah, it's better be in Florida, believe me. Yes. Um, so so the, the the weather helps keep you here as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. 
Any chance that you would ever go in, to another another track and try and ride? Or are you pretty much set in Florida? Well, uh, they they asked me, they offered me to go in Canada in 2020, mm -hmm. but uh, was the year that uh, I have the two Kentucky horse uh, fighting for the uh, for the Derby points it was Sole Volante the Indian. And so right. when they ask, uh, they ask me after the Gustry meeting, uh, and so my answer was uh, obviously no, because I have the chance to ride one or, or, or the other in the Derby. And, right. uh, you know, since then, uh, you know, I never have a mind, uh, nobody, nobody asked me. And uh, so if they don't ask you, if, uh, uh, it's a little bit tough to move your tack without connection. Yeah. Uh, if no. you don't have connection, uh, you can move your tack. Absolutely. You know, was it at all? I mean, it's great to have horses going for the Derby. I understand that. Anybody would. But when you have two horses the same year, going for the Derby. And it's not like, you know, every year you're in that position, you know, uh, you know, some riders are fortunate enough. They're lucky. They are every position, every year they have, you know, a couple of Derby horses because they ride for those outfits that always have the Derby horses. You had two potential Derby starters the same year at the Indian Sol Volante. Was that frustrating in a way where you're like, ah, they have to both come along the same year. They couldn't come along one one year, one the next year. So you have two chances. Was that like a little like, oh, bad luck in a way, you know, like what? Yeah, it was, it was pretty frustrating because they were totally different horse. One uh, yeah. was a fast sprint horse, a speedy horse, and the other was uh, always a slow horse and coming from behind. So the characteristics of the horses uh, were very, very different. So at the beginner was... Uh, tough to pick one of the two and uh, unfortunately only one he made uh, and uh, we have the bad luck that they move from may to september the derby so we'll uh, plan off bad luck uh, between uh, these uh, case of uh, of derby but uh, yeah at the beginning was a uh, but was uh, in the same time uh, was a good uh, a good feeling uh, because uh, i mean uh, have the opportunity uh, to ride uh, the Kentucky Derby and uh, to have two horses and the points, uh, I mean, is uh, for for uh, you know a uh, self-made guy and uh, right. coming from uh, nowhere, it was a good feeling. It was a really really good feeling. Yeah, you know, I, I had said it before when we spoke to you uh, before Sol Volante ran that. I really thought that was a phenomenal story. You know, like you said, coming, coming, coming from nowhere and getting to the Kentucky Derby, uh, you know, language barrier and, and, and everything else. Uh, it does show the word that you used before, um, perseverance. I mean, that defines, that defines your career and define, defines you. You, never, you, you. you know, you never gave up and I don't expect you're going to give up. So uh, hopefully... Uh, there's a, a really big one with your name on it somewhere. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so to find uh, another one. Yeah, no, I, I think, and, uh, you know, you're out there every day. So, uh, you know, ho hopefully that, 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 that will happen for you because if no, I don't think anybody that watches this or that knows you personally um, can argue that you don't deserve it because I think you do. I think you're a, 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 a good rider an excellent rider uh and i think given the right opportunity you would you would you would get the job done uh, thanks i appreciate it and you know it, it, it's 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 tough Did, didn't you win um the sam davis on sol volante too or no yes yes, yes. You won the sam davis, that, right, yeah. That, yeah right um i remember i remember then he ran they ran the belmont before the derby that year yeah yeah. Right? Uh, right, yeah. yeah, was the first leg in June uh, was the Belmont uh, and they move uh, to September the Derby and uh, and the Belmont uh, he ran good because he tried hard uh, and uh, tough tough race uh, but he ran uh, he ran good. Yeah, no, he he did and he's still around Sol Volante. He's still plugging along. 
Yeah, yeah, he, he always try his best, you know, behind him. There is Andy Biancon that uh, he did an excellent uh, job from uh, day one. Uh, so uh, she's a good uh, horseman uh, and uh, she always take care of him. Yes, no, she 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 did she did a really great great job with him and she does a good job on television too. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's she, nice. She, she's good. Um Luca, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Um much respect for you and everything that you've accomplished. Um Luca Red. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, John. And um, thank you for having me and uh this is a beautiful show. No, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, again, I don't think I don't think you get enough credit for all you accomplished, and that's a shame. But hopefully, that big win will come, and that'll that'll change all that. Because you know, the funny thing about horse racing it takes that one big one, and all of a sudden, bang! Yep. Everything, of everything course, is, this, you know I mean? this is a, this is a how we wake up early every morning. Yes, absolutely. Um, again. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Luca Panici, he's a, he, he's a fine rider. Um, I've got a great picture I'm going to put on this video of you coming down the stretch on Mary Quite Contrary. And it's the thing I love. It's when all four legs off the floor, so you're in the air. You no, know, four, good. four yeah. off the floor. So that's the picture that's going to be up with this video. Um, and you look, you look real good in the saddle. So uh, I think you'll like it. And... Uh, Thanks again for coming on. Thank really you. Appreciate you, Luca. I'll shut Thank this off. Thank you. To and, you. Uh, we'll say goodbye off camera for a second, okay? All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Dan here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. The legend himself, Frankie Dettori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's a good start. <laughs> so you, have, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world-class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Nobody does it better.